Guys, you on another episode with the Ultimate Fight Fans. I'm Joey KO. I'm here with Mixed Martial Mike. And here we go. So, I wanted to do a little video on my man right here, Joe Gantz, or Joe Gans, right? Because his original name is actually Joe Gans. But the newspaper article that first started writing about him called him Joe Gant. So he stood Joe Gant for his entire career, just to give you a little context. That's nice. And it's weird to me that they don't talk about this man because he is the very first African-American world champion from Baltimore, Maryland. Period. Period. He's the very first African-American so world champion. Before Joe Lewis. Before Jack Johnson. Before Jack Johnson. Before anybody. He wow. was the very first. People always refer to Jack Johnson as the first champion, but he's really the first heavyweight, heavyweight African-American champion. And it's weird to me because this guy was actually very popular in his day. As you can see, I mean, all guys are ugly to me, but he looks like a handsome devil to me. And he has like and, a cool stance too. Yeah, and people really liked him. Like he, he attracted fans. He ended up losing his first title fight and then won the rematch. Knocked him out in the first round. So he ended up winning the world title in spectacular fashion. And he was very popular. He had uh, over 170 some fights, 147 wins, over 100 knockouts. It's like 16 draws. And what yeah, I like yeah. to mention as well is that it actually explains why Baltimore is such a field of beautiful fighters, right? Yeah. Legendary fighters come from that area. Sugar Ray Leonard. The first champion, and he was fighting from the 1800s, right? Yeah. We, oh, he was born in the 1800s, that's to say. Well, yeah. It was. A long time ago but history doesn't talk about him even though he was popular in his heyday and there's you know statues there's a statue of him in Baltimore somewhere really yeah so they he, they do pay respects to him in, in Baltimore Maryland I don't know if it's in the cemetery or the gym he used to train or something like that I did read about uh, the the Madison Square Garden where he won the world title believe it or not in Madison Square Garden he won the title they actually do have a, a statue of him or some memorabilia in the locker room or locker room area I read about somewhere in the article. So they do pay homage to him, but a lot of people don't seem to know that. And I wanted to highlight this because a legend like that needs to be remembered. No, this is a great history lesson. Not every subject matter I, I get to be privy to. And this is actually the beauty of the sport, the fact that no matter what it always seems like you're gonna find out something new there's always a shadow great fighter out there because you know iron sharpens iron and sometimes you see you hear crazy sparring battles of fighters and then they become champions and then you find out about gentlemen like joe gans and you don't even know the history but his record is phenomenal right? yeah and, and come on yeah and he was a uh, that guy i mean he was a champion in a time where boxing was the sport baseball and football all these sports basketball it was not i mean boxing was the biggest sport in the world and i think other sports barely existed in comparison so the world paid attention to boxing and he dominated those other sports are analogies of what boxing and mma is all about like when you be like oh they kicked the yankees kicked that team's ass no they didn't they just hit a ball we're talking about the most compelling action, the most natural, animalistic sport ever. And it's going to be, if you had all these sports in the corner, just like Dana White loves to say, they start to fight, people are going to go. It's like still the number one attraction when you think about it. Like, not in all terms, because it's not the most mainstream sport. Not every fighter, it's but yeah. It's a niche sport, but at the end of the day, when certain think, things hit the mainstream, woo! I think the sport really depends on who the fighter is. Right. This term, definitely this fight is bigger than others and when you get two big fighters it's when you get the biggest matchups but definitely man give us your thoughts on this man you know did you know that he was the first African American world champion because I ask people all the time and it, it surprises them I'd be like no it wasn't Jack Johnson 
is Joe Gantz or Joe Gans, however you want to say it. I did also want to ask you, why do you believe, like your humble opinion, because we didn't really get into that. Why do you believe his career and his accomplishment has been overshadowed by the fact that it was, you know, Jack well, Johnson or this? Uh, you, do you think it's a size thing? I think definitely a size thing. He's a lightweight. I think more importantly, it was six years before Jack Johnson. The, none of his videos are out. There's no highlight videos of him. You have to catch his fights on the radio and hear the commentators talk about mm -hmm. it. That's how people knew who this guy was. He was very popular, but theres I don't think there's much footage of him. If there is, I, I mean, I couldn't find any. But you can read articles. There's monuments on him, like statues in Maryland and... I believe there's something that matters to Madison Square Garden, but and what you, you gotta really look at it, look for it. And what would you say was his biggest win? Well, when he won the world title in Madison Square Garden, mm -hmm. you know, I don't remember these guys' names, but it is a, a famous a, historic even, name. Even in yeah. that time, they were fighting at Madison Square Garden. The it's, mecca of boxing. Wow. It was literally Incredible. the mecca of boxing. All the big fights happened in Madison Square Garden, especially back in the days another thing to add is that he was a world champion six years before jack johnson wow so that's a huge gap yeah so by the time jack johnson became the champion that's why there's footage of him and stuff like that and, just and he was more hated so i think we remember him too because jack johnson was like a brash a cocky yeah. type of boxer he set the tone for what ultimately yeah. became like the repertoire to get the biggest attention. People got to hate you almost as much as they love you. Well, because he was black, attention. unfortunately, he actually hurt black fighters because the boxing wouldn't give title shots for years to black fighters because of how Jack Johnson did it. Wow. So, yeah, very racist sport back in those days. But eventually they could not deny Joe Lewis and Joe Lewis ended up Joe Gann. You know, years later, I think it was like 20 years later, he became But we wouldn't the even get those guys if it wasn't for, for pioneers like this um, six years yeah. prior. So that's beautiful stuff. So and, I'm glad you brought this up. And reading about him, stylistically, he was a pretty fighter. He had a beautiful boxing oh. style. That's why his name was the old master. Mm. Because he gave he master crazy classes. Stunts. You don't see that stuff. Yeah, so he wasn't just finesse. I mean he had a hundred knockouts. He'll knock you out too. But he he was skills. He, he brought play. boxing skills oh. into the ring. The old master? It's a great That's name. a great name. But give us your opinion. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, y'all.